What's up guys? Today we're here talking about the differences between zoom lenses and prime lenses. We're gonna talk about which one I prefer, which one should you maybe invest in for what you shoot, what are the key differences, we're gonna talk about all of it. I really wanted to make a video all about this topic because when I started out in photography, I quite literally had no idea what the key differences are. And secondly, because when I first started shooting, I only shot with prime lenses. So lenses like the 35 millimeter F1.4, a 50 millimeter F1.2, and now, I I'm at a point where I quite literally never take a zoom lens off my camera. So I went from one to the other pretty drastically. So we're gonna discuss why that is. But first let's talk about the key differences here. So with prime lenses, they are lenses that have a fixed focal length. So they're basically stuck on whatever specific millimeter that lens is. So if you're shooting with an 85 millimeter, you can only shoot from 85 millimeters. You cannot change that focal length. You can of course change things like the shutter, the ISO, the aperture, but if you want to shoot your composition from a different sort of crop, you physically have to move with your camera in space to change that. Whereas zoom lenses, on the other hand, cover a range of focal lengths and offer you a lot of versatility without having to change your lens while you're shooting. So you might hear this initial comparison and think, if a zoom lens has all the focal lengths in one, why would I not just keep that lens on my camera all the time? And then you don't have to invest in other lenses, you don't have to ever switch your lenses. And one key reason why you might not just want a zoom lens is because these prime lenses generally offer way wider apertures than zoom lenses and with apertures I'm referring to the amount of light that your lens allows into the camera so if you're shooting at a really low aperture like f1.4 or f1.2 that allows more light in and you can shoot a really low lit scene without getting too much grain your image appears sharper overall and just way better quality and this is because a zoom lens that goes down to a wide angle like 18 millimeters or 24 millimeters must use the same number of lens elements as the telephoto end of it. So something like 75 millimeters throughout the entire zoom range. So basically by its own design, it becomes limited in its maximum aperture. So this is exactly why you see a lot of zoom lenses only really be able to go down to f2.8. A few years ago within the photography style that I was really interested in and shooting at the time, I loved shooting with a really low aperture to kind of blur out the background. I loved shooting in low light. So these prime lenses like a 50 millimeter, for example, were pretty much crucial in me being able to walk away with a clear shot that represented what I kind of had in mind and really avoiding any grain because I feel like I just wanted my photos at that time to be almost painterly. I loved kind of the creaminess and the blur that a lens like an 85 millimeter F1.4 would give me. And the difference between a few stops from F1.4 to F2.8 might not sound like a lot, but if you're in a really dark situation, the two different apertures is really the difference between a usable shot. So like I said, these prime lenses are not only really great in low light conditions, but they're overall just super sharp and really high quality lenses. They're really, really popular in engagement shoots, in weddings and shooting headshots. But with that becomes feeling a little bit confined within that focal length. But with prime lenses, I always recommend to kind of take advantage within whatever space you're shooting in and move around to achieve different looks. So as you get closer to whatever subject you're shooting, you can get a really nice smooth backdrop that's really blurry and gets rid of sort of any unwanted elements in the background. And then for some variety, you can walk super far away from your subjects and get some really sharp wide angle shots of the overall scene. Zoom lenses also tend to be a little bit heavier and bulky. And if you're someone who's on the go running from location to location, you might not want to risk adding more weight that's already in your camera bag. So although you can hit all those focal lengths with a zoom lens, you might run into some obstacles. I think the reason that I kind of shied away from zoom lenses when starting out in photography is all of those little kind of nuances of the bulkiness and just hearing about how the quality might not be as good as the prime lenses I was using. So I was sort of happy within what I was doing. I feel like I just didn't feel the need to add one to my camera bag at the time, but that has since changed and now the 24-70 f2.8 lens is literally glued to my camera. I'm shooting with it right now and it rarely comes off. A lot of the time on my shoots, I'm still bringing lenses like my 50mm f1.2 too, especially if it's a portrait shoot because I just love how that lens looks. But most of the time I can usually rely on this lens. I feel like the reason I even started to look into zoom lenses as something I wanted to add to my camera bag was 
that I was finding myself in situations where zooming in was quite literally necessary for what I was shooting. So things like concerts, for example, they can also be really great for nature and wildlife shots where you physically can't move in whatever space you're shooting in. And I also found myself not wanting to have to switch on and off different lenses throughout my shoot so much. I felt like I was starting to waste not only my time but the model's time because I couldn't decide on what lens I wanted. Did I want a 35, a 50, an 85? They all looked so different to me and I feel like I would switch one on, take a photo, not really like it, so then I would switch again and just it was getting to be too much and especially like I was mentioning with concert photography you will miss a shot if you are not ready for it at any point so having a zoom lens on there I was able to walk away with a lot of not only variety but the feeling of knowing that I was ready for the shot at any point point. and although I know I mentioned zoom lenses being heavier I found myself previously starting to bring literally all of my prime lenses so there was times where I was bringing like four maybe even five lenses with me in case I wanted a different look and within my own kind of photography style changing throughout the year I'm not super set on only shooting at f 1.2 or f 1.4 which was almost like a necessity of my style back then and now I feel really free to kind of play with different f-stops from still on the lower range like those ones and twos but also moving up to like f5 or f6 or 7 to just get something that's super sharp and all in focus is something I'm starting to become interested in more of and that low aperture that comes with the primes is not as much of a necessity as it once was to me but zoom lenses do tend to be a little bit more pricey you might be able to buy a prime lens for a few hundred while zoom lenses can start to enter into the thousands so I feel like with deciding between the two it's really just all about considering what you're specifically shooting prime lenses definitely kind of encourage you to explore your scene a little bit more and move around within the location of where you're shooting but of course that's not always an option if you're in a small tight space zoom lenses are super great for being able to adapt to those environments and with all this information I'm not really you know telling you to necessarily pick a side although that would be a fun debate in the comment section it's mostly just thinking about what story needs to be told for whatever you're shooting and what you're aiming for composition wise some days I do feel like I want a prime lens on my camera and other days like I mentioned my 24 to 70 zoom lens doesn't come off my camera so it's ultimately up to you so let me know in the comments what you've been loving recently is it prime lenses or zoom lenses and maybe this video changed your mind and makes you want to kind of go out and search for a new lens that fits whatever you're shooting I'll definitely be sure to leave some links below to my favorite lenses and yeah I hope you learned a thing or two but with all that I will see you guys soon